Hey everybody, Chris, the old ass retro gamer, back again. Today I'm going to continue with the pickups I've had since I stopped making videos a few months back. And today I'm going to do the PlayStation 1 games, which is a system I always seem to find cool stuff for, even if I'm not even looking. And I've managed to pick up quite a few pretty awesome games. Uh, I'll start off with the long boxes, which I want to get all the long... If there's a long box version of the game, I would prefer to get that over the jewel case version. Alien Trilogy, which is an upgrade. I did have the jewel case greatest hits version. Awesome first person shooter based on the first three Alien movies. This came out long before the fourth movie came out, which did get its own game, which was pretty awesome. Way better than the movie it's based on. Crazy Ivan, which is a giant mech game. Magic Carpet, which is a... I don't know if it's racist. <laughs> it, it always kind of... I never owned this back in the day. Because it always just kind of struck me as being in bad taste. But you play as this little Arab kid that's flying around on a, on a magic carpet. It's a shooter. It's a 3D shooter. It is kind of cool. It showed off a lot of really cool graphics that people didn't know that the PlayStation was capable of. I do believe this was a port of a PC game. Or a Mac game. Can't be sure. One of the only sports games I enjoyed back in the day... NBA in the zone. Konami's sports games, at least their early sports games for the PlayStation, were a lot of fun. There's this, and then there's NHL Face Off. If there is a sport I would buy games for, it would be hockey. For some reason, I don't know why, they just appeal to me the way they do, but I've always enjoyed it. Rayman. 2D platformer perfection. It still holds up. The graphics are beautiful. The music is awesome. This game is awesome, and if you do not have it, you need it. Tekken. I hate this game. I hate it. I don't, I don't know, there's just something about it, it's just, I, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do Tekken, I can't. I remember I got into a fight with a GameStop employee when I went to buy Dead or Alive for the PlayStation, and when I said to him, Tekken 2 had just come out, and when I went to the store and he's like, can I help you? I'm like, yes, can I please have a copy of Dead or Alive for the PlayStation? He goes, oh, you don't want Tekken 2? I'm like, no, I hate Tekken, I really don't like it. It just gives me this look, and goes, better than this crap! When somebody questions my judgment, especially when I'm about to pay them for something, I usually don't take that kind of shit. I don't care. Uh, and if he didn't like it, I could have gone to another store and bought it there too. But I pretty much just said, you want my money? Shut the fuck up. And he rang me up and that was all there was to it. Story time's over. XCOM UFO Defense. And this is an early strategy game and it is a lot of fun. I do need to buy the mouse for the PlayStation so I could play this the way it was intended. But... This is a super awesome game. And then there's Zero Divide. It's like if you were to take Tekken and Virtual Fighter, they double teamed a robot, this would be the baby that they produced. It's terrible. At least I have a game in the Zs, in the long boxes. It's something. So now we'll get into the Jewel Case games, which I do have a fair number of. Some of which are extremely awesome. Like Alundra. I do have the second one. I don't know if I showed it off in an earlier video, but I did pick that up at a local store, but I didn't want to play it until I managed to get a copy of the first game. It's weird. The second game was released by Activision, but this first one was released by Working Designs, which is like the shit when it comes to RPGs for this time. This game, holy shit. This is a really expensive game. And I found a guy on Facebook, in one of the groups I'm in, who was selling it for about a third of the price. And when... I, don't, I knew he knew what it was. I think he just wanted to get rid of a bunch of his games, and I was the first person to bite. I think I beat out a lot of people for it. And that is Brigandine, The Legend of the Forcina. It is a strategy RPG. It's by Atlas. You know, you can't go wrong with them. Uh, it is super hard, and it has a very steep learning curve. But it is cool. It is very rewarding to play this game and to f see, like, your tactics pay off. It is, it is rad as hell. Codename Tenka, which is a first-person shooter by Cygnosis, which was a company I had like a love-hate relationship with. They would make a really cool game like Wipeout, and then they would make something that was completely shit like this afterwards. They were unreliable when it came to games. Like, you didn't know what you were going to get. I did like Microcosm, though. Whatever. And then there's this piece of shit. Contra Legacy of War. This is the game that nearly ruined Contra forever. It is not fun. The controls stink. It is just, it's overly, I mean, the, the original games for the Nintendo were difficult. This is beyond difficult. This is, it's, it's like prohibitively difficult. I mean, it's, it's hard to do anything in this game because the controls are so whacked. I bought it for about $3 at a, a local store. 
And when the guy asked me, oh, I didn't know they made a Contra game for the PlayStation. I was like, yeah, they do. And you're charging the correct amount for it because that's about all it's worth. Dracula, The Last Sanctuary, which is a game by this company called Dreamcatcher. Um, it's like a graphic adventure type of a game, kind of like Myst, uh, with obviously Dracula. It is pretty cool. I did not know this game existed. I found it randomly at a store. And it's two discs. Graphics are pretty cool for the time. It is a really good game. Next is Dragon Valor by Namco, which is an action RPG fantasy. Really, really cool. Graphics at the time were stunning. I picked this up off of somebody on Facebook who was selling a lot of like RPGs. And I thought this was going to be a straight up RPG. It turns out to be like it's an action RPG. But I didn't mind. It is awesome. Another game I didn't play back in the day, which is Front Mission 3 by Squaresoft. It is a strategy RPG. Really hard strategy RPG with mechs. Um, I never played games like this back in the day, but I've come to appreciate it now that I've kind of gotten into them now because I played uh, XCOM and Fire Emblem. So I'm kind of slowly growing to appreciate the strategy game. And this is a really cool one. The only thing was the other games in the series only came out in Japan, I do believe for the Super Nintendo. <sighs> oh, Gekido Furious 4 player fighting featuring the music of Fatboy Slim in Apartment 26. Nobody knows who the fuck Apartment 26 is except this guy because I had their first album was industrial music, just so you know. The four-player adapter for the PlayStation 1 had come out, and there was a bunch of fighting games that featured four players at the same time. This was one of them, the Wu-Tang Clan game, Cardinal Sin. And there's another one that was coming out that was supposed to be super ultra gory and it got canceled. I remember renting this back in the day. And even as a one player game, this is garbage. I never watched the anime that this is based on. But the only reason I bought this is because I found it for like two bucks at a Goodwill. Inuyasha, a feudal fairy tale. It's a fighting game that's based on an anime that I never watched. So therefore I am completely lost when they're talking about stuff in this game. So, I mean, as a fighting game, it is decent. It reminds me a little bit of, like, Samurai Showdown, I guess, graphic-wise. But when it comes to everything else, it's just kind of like, uh, that, man, that is a coffee. Uh, this is an RPG I've been looking for for a long time. And then one of my friends that I've made on Facebook through these video game groups that I'm a part of was selling his. I said, yes, please, I want it. And I got it for a very cheap price. Legend of Dragoon. This was one of those RPGs I always wanted to play back in the day, but I never ended up getting a copy of it. There was a time where I think I had a choice to buy this or Chrono Cross, and I picked Chrono Cross because I liked Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo so much. People are still begging for a sequel for, like, the PS4. Maybe we'll get it. I don't know. But now I can finally see what all the hubbub's about. I've been looking for this forever. Now that I have it, it's going to get played post-haste. There's another game I've been looking for for a long time, and I've always under the assumption that it was super expensive. Turns out this version isn't. It's the Saturn version, which is. And that is Mega Man 8. ODT, which stands for Or Die Trying. It's an adventure game by Psygnosis. Here's another one of those games where you never know what you're going to get from this company because sometimes their stuff is awesome and sometimes it is poop. This ends up being one of the ones that's like right in the middle. It's cool. Lots of cool ideas. It's kind of out there story-wise. At the same time, it's kind of... Hmm? Pac-Man World. Parasite Eve 1 and 2. Project Overkill by Konami. Here's RC Revenge, which is like a PlayStation version of RC Pro-Am. Except you get to play as boats, tanks, and trucks, and all this other kind of shit, and you have attacks. So it's kind of like if you were to take um, Twisted Metal and mix it with RC Pro-Am. It's cool. It's not great. It's definitely not Twisted Metal. Shrek Treasure Hunt. The only reason I bought it was because I found this just after continue played this game for one of their episodes and they look like they're having so much fun playing it because it was it was one of those games that is like so bad they couldn't help but enjoy themselves because of how bad it was that i said sure i'll give it a shot and yeah this game is awful spite of the video game i actively seek this out when it was first released because i read about it and it was being made by boss game studios which was a side project from boss special effect company for hollywood films and it was like their first attempt at making something like you know a really unique video game so i was like i have to have it because 
They did special effects for Alien 3 and a bunch of other movies that came out in the early 90s. And it's a really, really, really cool platformer. Really unique concept. And there's a lot of fun. You get to crawl on walls, ceilings. Oh, a spider with a missile arm. I mean, yeah. Tomb Raider 3. This is the game that made me lose interest in Tomb Raider. I loved the first one. The second one I thought was amazing. The second one just kicks the first one's ass in every respect. And then I was really excited when this came out because I was like, yes, yes, more Tomb Raider. This is where they started to lose me. I don't know why this felt rushed and unfinished. The controls were never all that great to begin with. This, for some reason, just felt even worse. The story is stupid. The story just kind of like jumps around with no real point behind it. So I played this, I think, for a couple of days after buying it. And after that, I was pretty much done with it. I never picked up any other games in the series until Tomb Raider Legend came out for the Xbox. Vandal Hearts, which is a, I do believe, a tactical RPG, which is pretty much like Final Fantasy Tactics. I haven't played it yet, haven't had time, but I got it off of a, a Facebook friend that was in one of the groups I'm a part of. I always remember it being fondly talked about back in the day, and there's even a sequel for it. So I was like, you know, it's Konami. I can't pass that up, you know, for the price that it was being offered at. I had to have it. Warriors of Might and Magic by 3DO. You thought they were dead. No. No. They created the Army Man games. They're a juggernaut. It's not very good. And then finally... Xena Warrior Princess! Got this at a local store. This is a, like, a third-person adventure action game starring... Oh, you guessed it, Xena. I remember everybody talking about how awesome this was because of the Chakram stuff. I, I guess when you throw the Chakram in this... I haven't played it yet, as you can tell. I guess when you throw the Chakram, the camera follows it. Which was kind of a cool deal back then when... Special effect 3D stuff was, was all the rage. It was all rad as hell. But I do remember reading reviews of this back in the day and everyone saying that for a licensed game like this, this was actually pretty decent. So when I found it at a local store for a couple of bucks, I, I, I couldn't help it. I was just kind of like, yeah, sure, why not? Lucy Lawless is hot. I'll do it. I'll tumble for you. Call me. So that's it for PlayStation 1 games. Uh, as you can tell, Facebook is a great resource for collectors right now. I have found so much great stuff on Facebook through people selling in these forums that I'm a part of, or these groups. I have saved so much money. Don't forget to subscribe and comment, share, like the video, give us a thumbs up. Let me know games you might want me to talk about in more detail in the future. And also, check out my other show, Toasty, that I do with my friend Josh, where we talk about everything geek, from movies to video games to comic books. We've had plenty of awesome guests like Taryn Manning from Orange is the New Black and Scott from Video Game Sellers. We even just had uh, Erica Zabo from Mindbit do a, a video with us. So, uh, until next time, I am Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer signing off. Bet your bottom dollar. Yahoo! Can't hit them high notes to save my life.